How's it going? This is Brian from B's Music Shop. I'm here at Big Rapids at the Big Rapids Guitar Show, the first ever music instrument exchange Big Rapids Guitar Show. And I'm here with Brian from More Game Music showing us some things he's made. How's it going today, Brian? It's doing great. Awesome, man. Uh, so you make these guitars, huh? You're, uh, you're, you're building I, some stuff here. I am building a lot of stuff. Um, I, guitars are a big part of it. Um, yeah, people, that right yeah. that's, that's super cool. I love the wings so, in here. So what kind of wood is this? So this is poplar. This actually came from Home Depot. This is Paduke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, wherever you can find it, you know, these are more like prototype mock-ups. So, you know, it, it's awesome. It's, it's yeah, easy I love, to get your I love hand the, on it. The little, the, it's really cool how you, how you did the top here. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. This was uh, based off of a uh, uh, a guitar from the 60s called the Airline that they sold at Montgomery's Wharves. Oh, absolutely. Right? I love those. And, the resin glasses um, and stuff? Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, we call it the Orbiter because it's, you know, it's a, it's a little higher. It's, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we this was originally kind of a pick guard that ended here and I was like, oh, we could extend it and it would look really cool and we'll put the little yeah. F-style Mando horns on it and adjust all the curves and make it look like absolutely nothing like the original, but you know. <laughs> Is it, but once you said it, I got, like, especially this horn and stuff, I kind of like, once you said it, it clicked with me. That's where I'd seen some of that before. Yes. So you're just prototyping out a bunch of models? Is it something you're looking to, like, produce or just do, yeah. like, custom shops? It's or? custom shop, basically. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I try to keep it, like, affordable custom shop. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, some people hear custom shop and the, the dollar signs go, we, we can do it for for, you know, with some off-the-shelf parts and stuff and keep the price down. Awesome. Are you CNCing these? Are you pin routing them? Or what I, you... I am CNCing them. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the big investments for the shop oh, initially. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah so those, are, those are cool machines. This, this is our offset. We call it the Riptide. Nice. That is walnut that is locally sourced. Nice. That's super cool. Not Home Depot. Not Home, Not Home Depot, Depot. sourced. It was... It was a buddy who cuts it from his property and uh, dries it and, oh, and nice. everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like this. This one we call the Cobra because nice. my shop partner and I are both car guys. Okay. And so we designed this kind of based off of the Shelby Cobras and the Corvettes, the early Corvettes. Yeah. With, uh, that side scoop. That's and, super cool. Um, I mean, car stylings have always been in guitar design for a long time. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's well, so many cool, and cool. This one back here. This is yeah, this, so this is, is the other fully cobra. formed. This is a fully formed one, not just it, a body. It's an adult cobra, the more dangerous kind. Um, this actually is the first guitar I ever built. Oh, nice. And uh, again, this is a figured African mahogany, and this is a nice flame ambrosia maple that I've also found at Home Depot. Nice. <laughs> no, rail hammers from our buddy Ken. Yes. Those are great. Ken, great Ken was a, a great guy to talk to the oh, first yeah. time I talked to him. Man. Oh, yeah, great, yeah. He was just guy. in our studio for a podcast like two days ago. We yeah. loved him. Yeah. And uh, the brand, we call it Blockhead Guitars. Nice. And uh, that's that's kind of the, the signature is the, the actual block. Oh, in that's the cool. That's so cool. Yeah, I, like, I like that, man. It's really cool. How long you been making? How long ago did you make this? This is maybe a year. Okay. Um, so this is a know, new thing you guys have been doing. Yeah, and I literally no schooling, no nothing. I'm just I've been playing guitar for a long time and paying attention. Nice. But here, since we also talked you. about the the car. Yeah. This one. This is kind of my Telecaster, and I haven't even officially named this yet, but. I'm thinking Telecasters are kind of the first hot rod guitar, right? Yeah, yeah. And what was the first hot rod car? 32 Ford? Yeah. Now, if you follow this curve that goes down into here, that's the front fender of a 32 Ford. Oh, nice. If you silhouette it up, and this is the trunk line. Oh, okay. And it took me about a year to figure out how to make that look good on a guitar. Yeah, yeah, no, that's super cool. And we're still playing around with finishes. This has a lot of uh, orange peel because it was raining when I was spraying it, but yeah. I think I'm gonna sand it down, add a little white wash to the top, and it'll look nice and worn and wonderful. Yeah, it's cool. We're just trying to figure out where your bodies are and move to finishing them, you know, and getting that all together. Yeah, yeah it's a long process. Yeah, we're pulling together the uh, the finishing shop. Yeah. So, so what are these? These are this guy. Another car inspired guitar. This is called the Tailfin. Okay. Yeah. Like the yeah, like the yeah. It was also kind of a shower thought. I said, well, we could like do the modern with the, the tail up here and then do this is a, a jazz master. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And it's actually like the most comfortable guitar you can play because like you got nice armrest right here. Your elbow sits perfectly. You can sit down and play it. You can sit down classical style. You can you can do one of those. I mean, it, so I play all my V's up right. on up on end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's shockingly comfortable, and I didn't anticipate that when I designed it. So. Yeah, I like the color too. That's an Bonus, awesome color. Right? Yeah. And we got Pickups, uh, Oat Soda Sound Company. I think we're the only dealer for them. Oh, nice. Um, out of Arizona, he's a single coil specialist. He's kind of a surf guy. Yeah. And so nothing more surf than this. Yeah, no, it's super, super cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And then you made a, you made a transparent one here. So this is a, a very, very exclusive technique. Um, this was actually a team build, I should mention that. This was uh, Jeff Benj, who's downtown Chicago. Um, he does the star guitars every time I'm there. He's like, oh yeah, Billy Corgan's guitar is over there. Yeah. He did the, uh, the Valinos for Kurt Cobain on, uh, in utero. And, oh, really? Yeah. But this one, uh, so we shot this with a 5 million volt particle accelerator. Oh, wow. And uh, you got electrons shooting straight down into it at 99.23% the speed of light. Wow, the electrons yeah, get it's really in, crystallized, like in there, even more so than you'd see in like one of those like the fractal. You know, they do the yeah. fractal burns on like wood, but yeah, that it's definitely like more three D than that. But there's the there's, and stuff, there's but. only one group of people in the world that do this. Oh and wow! I just happen to know them. They're Fermilab guys and Commonwealth Edison guys and Motorola guys, and one of them is the guy who pilots the Hubble and the Web. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, so when the plastic vaporizes, it's about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit for about a millionth of a second. Oh, wow. That's hot. Yeah, it's pretty pretty hot. It's yeah. pretty hot, yeah. yeah. You come out of the factory just smelling like plastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's also, it's got to be good for your lungs. It's also pretty heavy, but man, yeah. it's a great guitar. Super cool. I love the way you put the LEDs in the edge because, yeah, really, like, it's so 3D. Yeah. Like, so much more. Yeah, and and this is I mean you can see it's oh yeah it's oh in man there. that's really cool it's in there should get down like in there yeah it's like the, if the, you look at the edge you can actually control the beam to get a certain amount of depth of penetration and we actually can like shoot it once flip it over shoot it again and get some figures in there um, do so some three D cool stuff. This was just like the first. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's much more that we have learned to uh, exploit with this. Yeah, that's really, really cool, man. And you've got, you've got another one down there, I right? Do. The same thing? This one's kind of hot off the press. We just got uh, the accelerator uh, about a month ago. Okay. And so this one is gonna be, this is three pieces of acrylic. And I think we can actually maybe get these. Uh, maybe not. Okay, so three pieces of acrylic shot separately, and we're gonna set this as an inset into a piece of mahogany. Oh, okay. And the idea is kind of that with that, I can bolt the neck onto wood, I can set the bridge into wood and get more of the wood tone. Yeah, because and acrylic, lose the weight of the acrylic. Yeah, the acrylic's exactly. very heavy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with, with three different pieces, I can exploit it a little bit and have you know the nice wing patterns here. Um, and and two shots here. Yeah. So how do they how do they do this? You said they do it with a particle accelerator. Is it like do they do you like drill a hole and it goes in there? Or? No. So we actually have to rent an entire facility to do this. Wow. It costs us. It's around fifty dollars a minute. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's not cheap. Yeah. Um, and you've got like a three-story vertical linear accelerator that comes shooting straight down. And the beam rasterizes across like this, and it gets fed underneath. Okay. And as the beam is going in, there's like lethal doses of gamma and X-rays. So you, you keep that nicely separated. You don't become the hull. No, no, no. But the accelerator is used uh, in industry to kind of cross-link. If you've got polymer chains going this way, it cross-links between them for more strength. Okay. So that's basically what what they would use that for we just kind of come in and go guitars are yeah you know why yeah not? it looks really cool i really like how like like i say 3d it is usually because it reminds me of the fractal patterns you see like on you know on wood when they do that but yeah. since it's acrylic you can see down into it this, a lot more and, and it is it's true fractal I mean, if you wanted to microscope it down and down and down it just keeps branching and branching and branching 
Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you showing me that. You said you Absolutely. have some pedals here you really like talking about? So, I mean, we have lots and lots you, of... Do you have a store then, I'm guessing? We do have a store. We're, okay. we're in Chicago, and as a custom shop, it's not a big uh, showroom. We yeah, yeah. just kind of have a, a little space, and people come in and talk to us. And we'll build just about anything. We will build your pedals, straps. Uh, I make my own picks. Uh, guitars, obviously. Just, just about anything. I'm doing some pedal boards for some big guys right now. But uh, one of the things we really like to do is find people that haven't been discovered yet. So yeah. uh, one of our favorites is uh, Thimble Wasp. These guys are out of uh, Columbus, Ohio. We were their first dealer. And we are just about to do a faceplate in that Lichtenberg figure for this pedal nice. with them. But this is one of the coolest delays I've ever heard. Yeah. There's, there's a couple things on there where they have these arpeggiated synthesized things that Usually I think, well, that's cool, but I could never use it. The way they program this, totally usable. I've written songs with it just as nice. an inspiration. Um, one of the coolest delays I have ever seen. Yeah, that thing's awesome. That's and cool. uh, we just picked up this one too. This is, if you like knobs and switches. This has no knobs, all switches. All switches. All, oops, all switches. <laughs> so this is, this is called the Abacus, and this is an overdrive. Very great sounding, very flexible. You have bright normal, low gain, high gain, three different clipping diodes, and now you have an Abacus, right? So yeah. So you've got, you've got the beads. Yeah. This is your gain knob. This is your output volume knob. You can see there's four beads, two beads, two beads, one bead, one bead. So if you wanted to turn it up to say seven, four, six, seven. Okay, <laughs> that, that's a really interesting way to do that. It's, it's a really unique interface and if I thought it was just a gimmick, I would not carry it. It is one of the most flexible overdrives you will ever hear. And I guess you don't have to worry about your knobs moving around. No, no. That's, no. that's, that's great. That's super interesting. <laughs> I didn't know where you were going to go with those beads and that wasn't where I thought you were going to go. So I, I enjoy that. Let's, yeah, let's not go. I, you know, important for me on our website, every pedal has the statistic KPSI. Yeah, 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 yeah. Knobs per square inch. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and you know, we, we, there's rare buzz also from Columbus, Ohio. They, uh, he does really good components, a lot of new old stock stuff, and charges way too little for it. Oh, really? It's wonderful. So it is an octave? Is this is an octave distortion. Okay. And he does a, a fair amount of little, um, you know, I just sold out of the coolest pedal. It's called the Fuzz bob -omb. Okay. It had one knob. The Mario, the bob And it bob was a yeah. bob knob. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. cool. He gives out these business cards. I love to give these to the kids. Oh, those are and super cool. This is literally, this is a fuzz pedal. Nice. You put the, yeah, you just lip yep. all the stuff. Teach kids how to solder. I love it because that's part of the goal is teach people how to build stuff and yeah. make, make their things. So I, I love these. That's super cool. That's super cool. Yeah, and he does a lot of stuff like charity builds and stuff too, which nice. I am definitely down with. Yeah, there's so, some, what's, what's this guy right here? So, Money Man, he is out of uh, Dallas. We were his first dealer as well. Um, he makes a series called the Panchitos, which is all Proco Rats, but okay. different, different ICs and everything. Uh, really sound great. And the Meteorite is kind of more his boutique overdrive. Nice. And we have Daredevil from Chicago. Oh, I know Johnny. Yeah, I worked yep. with Johnny 20 years ago in Guitar Center. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 And I think so, I got on his radar when he started doing that uh, Ron Ashton pedal a couple of years ago. That's I think it's gone now, but that was a yeah. really cool pedal. Well, he was pretty much my first call oh, when, yeah. when I started. I was like, okay, we're going to help you build up. So yeah, I remember the height pedal. I feel like I have one of these somewhere. <laughs> it's great. I mean, oh, yeah. you don't need any. That is no knobs. Zero, zero knob. KPSI. Zero. Right there. Yes. Yes. But it's a stackable overdrive. Yeah. That's what it is. And so we try and carry a little bit of the, uh, you know, the MXR, the, the stuff that people know that oh, yeah. brings people in. Then Thorpey. we can show them some of the other stuff. Yeah. Thorpey. Yeah. Man. Great cool pedals. Yeah. So, but oh. that's, I mean, that's kind of the overview of the shop. We like that's to awesome, find man. some folks who, you know, that's, we, we give them their first leg up, find some unique stuff, make sure that you know how to use it. Yeah. If you want to hobby build and modify your guitars, we're there. 
We're there as a resource for parts. We're there as a resource for knowledge. Awesome, man. Well, hey, appreciate talking to you today. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you.